This is The Wheel Weaves Watches, a spoiler-free breakdown podcast of The Wheel of Time on Amazon Prime. I'm your host, Danny, and I'm joined by my co-host, Brett, and we're here to bring you an in-depth look into The Wheel of Time show. We'll share reactions, episode breakdowns, and relevant background information without spoiling future content from the book series. So grab a drink and let's get watching. We'd like to acknowledge and thank our executive producers, Brandy and Aaron Kirkwood, Sean McGuire, Yanis, Albert Lorenzo, Light Blinded Fool, Green Man, Davis Ferreira, Margaret, Big C, Bennett Williamson, Dylan C, Hannah Green, Neralia, Jordan Gower, and Jeff Searles. In this episode, we're talking about episode five of season two. Yeah, episode five is Damani. Ooh. I immediately want to go back and rewatch this entire episode. I know. Oh my goodness, it you was were so like, amazing. Let's get the recording done and rewatch this right now. <laughs> snip, snap, snip, snap. <laughs> like, let's get it done real quick. Uh huh. It was amazing. It was incredible. I know. This was a good one. Yeah, my only wish is that these episodes were like two to three hours long because then I could get to see every character, every episode. Like, we didn't get any Matt this I episode. Know. That's what. Okay, that's my criticism. Yeah, I mean, okay. I'm not happy with that. Sure. I mean, there wasn't any land. I want to see more land. I want to see everybody. Well, But I okay. can't. I can't. I know. I'm not happy that there wasn't land progression, but I am a little bit happy that there wasn't more mopey land. Okay. You well, know? I, you know, he's in a tough position. Oh, same with Same with Matt. It's like a weird spot. I'm excited to pick up with them again. I do wish I get to see them this episode, but so much amazing stuff happened this episode. I know. And this was really, really close to the book. Oh, yeah. Like this some of these shots were like scene for scene. Almost. Hey, like word for word that almost. That felt very Wheel of Time to me. Like, oh, yeah. More than almost any other episode we've There's watched. like so many that are like almost identical. And you're like, wow, how do you even recreate that from yeah, the book? I know. And even the feeling of it. It. Yep. You know, the introduction to Teleran Riyadh. Yeah. Which is super exciting. The world of dreams and then the Forsaken just having meetings in there. And I'm like, <laughs> oh, yeah. And then we get some other Forsaken names. I know. Which we did I get predicted that. correctly. So far. So far. We got a couple so plus far, the boys. So, so like, far, we'll talk plus about the it. Boys. Yeah, that one. But the two, I did say those two. Okay. Okay. I did say them. Be- so I'm excited. Before we get into all of it, though, we have to do the traditional. Oh. What the heck did you make oh for us gosh. this episode? A really good, really good, simple, classic roast beef with your typical Wheel of Time fixins. Yeah, you got the veggies, you got the cheese, you got the pickles, you got the bread, the great, you got all the, you got everything. It was it great. It was good. You got the wine, you got the brandy, it's got the brandy again, you got the more wine. <laughs> it was great. Yeah, it was good. It okay. Was a good meal. Let's start off, and I want to talk about, you know what? Okay. Perrin gets a bad rap sometimes from you because you're like, oh, Perrin's boring. Okay, no, that's book Perrin. Well, I mean, you know, it's sometimes it's sometimes show Perrin, but like it's uh, also. Yeah, I mean, I'm less intrigued, although things were shifting last episode. I really loved the wolf visions and yeah. the hopper connection. You know what? I'm going to really enjoyed that. I want to clarify my statement. You love Perrin when Perrin does things. Yes. And this episode. I really love Perrin when he does yeah, things. Yeah, Perrin did stuff. Oh. Stuff happened. So oh, let's yeah, let's break did. it down quick. So before yes, we get did. into like the really amazing Perrin stuff with the Aiel and the introduction of Avienda. Oh my goodness. Oh yeah. We got to talk about we got Perrin a new and Elias. Character to talk about. There's like some, there's a little bit of tension in the relationship. Oh, uh, well, because Elias hates humans and Perrin doesn't. Yeah. Well, That's it was really kinda, what it comes down to. It was to. really funny because Elias kind of had that whole conversation with Perrin like, hey, these people, your friends, they're not your pack. Your wife, she wasn't your pack. Those people, not don't your pack. Don't you talk about my wife. Oh, my goodness. And Vera's like, wife? hey, man, you don't even know my pack. And the wolves are all like, don't step, man. A little, bit, a little bit tense. And the wolves are like, a little bit tense. no, we're a pack. Yeah. Yeah. And it was actually kind of funny because when I was watching, Perrin <laughs> said something about like, oh, I'm going to be alone or something like that. And Elias is like, oh, you're, you're never, never alone, alone now. now. And when yeah. I heard that, I was like, oh, man, is that a threat? And I was like, no, actually, wait, hold on. Because the wolves regular, are his head. Regular people aren't like threatened by the fact that you're never alone again and i was like wait i'm never gonna be alone again like i want to be alone most of the time (laughs) (laughs) no it's just that you'll always have the wolves in your head exactly they can send you visions and messages right so it's like oh you're not gonna be lonely but like for for me no thanks (laughs) 
<laughs> you appreciate your I, loan time. I appreciate. Time. Yeah, yeah, I like. I don't need a. But I don't need. You know. No, that. you don't need most people. Most actually. people all the time. <laughs> yeah. See you connected with the brown aja this episode oh i didn't want to skip to it it was like oh my god i belong in the brown aja like let's break up with the liquor and let's read some fucking books like yeah. let's go this <laughs> these are my people Although, here are you a detective i think that you would be a worse detective than Varen. they don't all have to be detectives Varen's an excellent detective. i mean she is and there's like one accomplice that's also a detective Yasika. i could be i could be like the third one who's like just i want to pop open yes. that bottle <laughs> like, Yasika. i love it <laughs> Fantastic. Anyway, so back to the Perrin Elias gang. That was a little bit tense. We did get the fact that Perrin's eyes will at some point go full yellow. Mm -hmm. It seems like he got some transitioning into full wolf brother to go still. Like we're not quite there. No, it seems like when he's angry or fighting. Yeah. Wolf mode. It kind of reminded me of like Nynaeve. Like when it's go time, it'll turn on. But like until that point, it's maybe not so much. Well, and I had some questions about that too. Because... Leandrin said that Nynaeve can channel when she's angry or afraid. Yeah. And you want to tell me a situation where you're less afraid than this one and she still couldn't channel? Well, I mean, it doesn't really seem like maybe that part was 100% correct. Well, we'll see. Like, Leandrin's not an all-knowing person. I know. We're jumping all around. Do you we want are. To get us back on track? Back, back yeah. to the Elias Perrin? parent situation. Yeah. So Elias brings them back to Atuan's mill, which is where the Shanchen initially invaded, where they got captured. Well, no, that's where Hopper eventually brings Perrin back to. Exactly, yeah. And then it was like the whole, like, oh, don't bring me back here. I don't want to, like, I have to go find my friends, whatever, whatever. Right. But we get Perrin coming into this place. And, and Perrin having very little idea how to tell directions when you're traveling. Like, he's just counting on this guy, and he's just, like, taking him in a big circle, and he has <laughs> no idea. I he's mean, like, I thought we were going in a straight line west. And it's like, who you knows? did? Like, Who's to say? You re- like it would be like if me if you drop me in the middle of the woods and you're just walking you're like yep we're going west and I'd like, be like okay, okay okay but at the same time then it'd be like actually we went in a circle and I'm just gonna take your word for it but <laughs> if you say at so. some point I gotta believe that Perrin is a little better at that kind maybe. of maybe and if it was me I'd be like I've never seen this village before in my life yeah. and it's like you were here like three days ago <laughs> and I would be like I don't know I don't remember it that's true. <laughs> That's true. That everyone's a you. everyone's a little bit different, right? But I just I just don't buy that. Parent just has no clue that they just walked in a big circle. Okay, we yeah. got to move past that though because we're in the village, and I love this interaction. I so, can't wait for when we actually break down these episodes. I know we'll get Sorry, there. We'll, we'll get there at yeah, some point. We're so just flashing through right now. We get introduced to Dane Bornhold, who is the son of Jeffrem, who's the old daddy white cloak who we got introduced to in one of like those initial first episodes in season one i think he was in or maybe just one i don't remember go ahead it's just one (laughs) (laughs) i'm pretty sure we only saw him one time it was the one guy the old guy who split off from valda yes and there was like the whole big like a little bit of animosity that really came out in this episode too because dane bornhold and valda who apparently is not dead not he's, dead. He's back. But his arm is in a little slingy sling. It is. And it is. That is gold star for me. Yeah. In season one, I was like, not dead. Egwene thinks he's dead. Not dead. I mean, we didn't see a body, and she stabbed him in the shoulder. If so like, you it... don't see them die, not dead. That's yeah, the rule. No, no, no. I, I, I agree That's with my you. My rule. I agree with you completely. So he's not dead. We have the animosity between like the regular white cloaks. And the questioners, because Which Dane's like, oh, yeah, it's 100 percent. It's perfect. And then also the little quip about like, oh, Valda, they're not wolves. Don't worry, man. Like, clearly That's that funny. story's yeah. gotten around a little bit and it's not going so well. And it's a little bit tense because Perrin's like, oh, man, I recognize Valda. Oh, my God, what's going to happen? And then we get this awesome, amazing, incredible, almost shot for shot remake. Almost. Yes. Almost. Very close. To an Aiel in a cage. That's right. But we get introduced to Avienda. 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 Welcome I love it. to the show, Avienda. Yes, we love saw it. this casting. It's, it. it's beautiful. It's fantastic. Yep. And I got to say, this she fight scene. She plays it really well. Oof. I just need to say again, I've said it lots of times before. Yeah. But the casting in this show, even the Dane Bornhold is pretty good. Kind of arrogant and lots of smudgeness. Yeah. And then we got Avienda, who's like badass as shit 
and so feisty. Oh yeah, like the the humor that we get after the scene too. Yeah, she's between her hilarious. and hilarious. Pa- I love it. It's amazing. But like this fight scene was absolutely incredible. Like we get introduced to Ayel. We got that amazing cold open in well, season one. I was one. gonna remind everybody in case you forgot. The Aiel women are amazing warriors. Yeah, well, like Aiel in general, but like also yeah. the uh, the Aiel women, they're fantastic. And well, even Dane Bornhold was like, man, she's good. Yeah, like yeah. they're throwing the punches and like she didn't pick up a weapon until the very end there. She grabs the axe, which is great. And I love the little back and forth between Avienda and Perrin where her parents like don't and she gives him like this little head nod like really, like man, look really. Eyes. Yeah, because she li- lifts up her veil over her face when she's fighting so you only see her eyes yeah yeah so and even with just touch. the eyes yeah it's like amazing that she can communicate like what why Baron? come on why yeah and it's like do you know how much it costs to get an actor on the show Lots. probably we got to keep him around for like an, at least another episode oh yeah right mm-hmm. okay so we don't want to kill the main guy like we can kill all those other white cloaks but like not this guy I just know. yet well and as soon as we saw dane too because the Dane reveal happened at Jordan Con last year. Yes. And the actor had a video message for people at Jordan Con. He did. Con. And so that was pretty cool to see. And we were like, oh, now he's here. He's Dane. <laughs> I got to say, his like, hair, like, he had a way better flow in the video. Yeah. <laughs> he's a good they, looking guy. Well, and <laughs> they did him dirty with those eyebrows and the facial hair. Like, he was, he was he's a good he's looking a, guy on that video. He was a different character maybe he'll grow cast. maybe he'll grow yeah. into that the cool <laughs> day world you know yeah still good looking still but like looking good but like but you i'm know, like oh those eyebrows let yeah. his natural flow happen yeah, and we're like we're all gonna be happier no, no, no. anyways no. so i do like the introduction we got We've like got an intro have the white cloak cut yeah they no, they, yeah that's true that's true hairstyle. they do yeah. they do it's like the yeah it's white cloaks and yeah. i did like when perrin notices that he's like oh my god this is a white cloak like this guy i'm talking to yeah it's like yeah man be careful when you're talking to strangers about yes. blocking people in cages. I know. Well, and now Dane is going to remember Perrin as the dude who saved him. I mean, maybe that's how that he's going to remember gonna it. I think that's going to come back. Maybe. I think it's going to come back. Well, he's also the guy who got him in that situation in the first place. Yes. They can go either way. Uh, yeah, I know. But it's going to come back. It's like, yeah, That's my prediction there. Okay. You know what? We'll, okay, we let's can, move on. We've we got let's lots do, of people to talk do. about. Let's talk about the girls. Okay. Egwene, Elaine, Nynaeve. Okay. And then So Leandra. my first gripe, do you want to hear it? Moraine said we couldn't take horses into the ways and oh. said, bye, Mandar Ben Aldeeb. Yeah, she did. Show, those are the horses. Shoot them all away. Yeah. Bye, horses. I don't think we ever they got those names come. in the show. Oh, sorry. That's their names. The, the, the horses have names. Canonically. Every, here's the thing. Every, every horse, horse has, has a name. A name. <laughs> <laughs> Even if you're like, I don't care about horse names. Doesn't matter. They all have names. They all have names. And you have to learn them. You have to. Okay. <laughs> Bye-bye, horsies, yeah. when we go on the ways the first time. And then, who just casually brings horses through the ways? Leandrin. Well, someone who's clearly evil. Clearly. Yeah. Yeah, dark, Gosh. dark friend Black Aja. Okay, if you didn't know, I'm Ugh. pretty sure we're painting the picture Ugh. that Leandrin is uh, Black Aja, dark friend, evil lady. Yeah, who She's doesn't like who, the Shanchen. Okay, so I actually so that, uh, let's 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 get there. Let's get there. So we left off last episode with it being assumed that the girls were being kidnapped, and then it's confirmation that yeah, yeah. not only are we kidnapping them, we're bringing them through the ways, bringing th- yeah. yeah, it's crazy. It's like shielded and bound through there. But the exit of the ways was kind of incredible because the exit of this way gate was different than the initial one that we saw. Like, it looks mm. different. Like, it didn't look like it had the stone pillars going up the sides. It had the steps going up. It had up. the steps. It didn't have, like, the arch almost. Yeah, like, yeah. It, it wasn't an arch, but, like, the, mm-hmm. the siding. And I like the opening of it. Yeah. That was I like, cool. I thought it was very well yeah. done. There's no spooky, evil, black wind no, chasing us I have, this time. I have a thought. Yeah. You know how Leandrin wakes up the girls at the end of this scene? Yeah. With her? In the ways, Egwene and Elaine stay knocked out, but Nynaeve wakes up. Okay. I think maybe Leandrin woke up Nynaeve to chat with her because they have a kind of like a, a, a little chat. bit. Yeah. Um, like maybe she's bored and wants to talk. That's true. Or something. Right? Well, there, there's also like we get that. Why don't the other two wake up when Nynaeve does. Right. Well, Leandrin wants to recruit Nynaeve for the dark. Yeah. Like that's literally the point that we talked about in season one. So bad guys in this show don't just want to kill all the Not good guys. Not just the show in like literally every show. Well, go not, ahead. <laughs> not necessarily. Like some shows, uh, like bad guys want to do bad things. And I would you don't... say that in your typical hero's journey, the 
bad guys want to recruit the good guys. Not always. Oh, okay, we're talking Star Wars. Name one other. Name another one and I'll give you the point. One more. Percy the- Jackson. I don't know enough about it, I so care. I can't I'm verify it. Right it. Now, can't and verify it. Is. it. Anyways, hundred percent. But like in a lot of other shows, it's like you don't necessarily want to recruit; you just want to like kill. I would say no. Mostly, it's when it's you can't it's say tight. mostly when you barely got two. Okay, Anyways. well I did get two. So, <laughs> yeah. Oh man. So I okay. Win. Okay. 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 Point taken. It's so mostly a Star Wars thing. Leandrin yep. wants to recruit Nynaeve for the dark, and Nynaeve's like, nah, at least not now. Anyways, and we got a little touch of that, too, with a Shamiel's monologue, like, oh, Matt was born to join our side, and then Perrin's going to be more wolf than men right away. So that's just something well, to think about. his name is also the father of lies, so let's, like, yeah, take pump the, what he pump says the into, that's you know, fair. with that's a fair. grain of salt in consideration. Okay, back on track. <laughs> so we exit the ways. That's amazing. The interaction between Leandrin and then Suroth is also fantastic because, like you said, the animosity between the two. So clearly, both Suroth and Leandrin are dark friends. Well, we didn't quite talk about the cold open where Suroth is getting berated yeah. by Turok, High Lord Turok, and gets her fingernails chopped off. Yes. Oh my gosh. Very shameful. Very shameful. Yes. And and she's pissed off. She well, she's clearly lost but then status. She's like really put in her place by Ishmael when she starts yelling at him. Yeah. Later. But it's so. a very good point that Ishmael makes. Like I really do think that's an important thing, and I want to talk about that a little bit later today about Ishmael's role with the Shanchen. But specifically talking about Siroth and Leandrin, the animosity where they're both clearly evil people, but they don't get along in their cultural views. Yeah. So we've got Leandrin who really thinks that channelers are all powerful and almighty and we deserve respect and all that good stuff. Well, yeah, and then I love how we get the background of the Shan Chen, who they clearly think that holding the power is something that should be earned. You should earn the right to be able to wield the power, and that's why they're leashing women who can channel. Yeah, so leading into Leandrin, clearly hating this conversation, so she releases the girls from the shields and the bindings before she goes back into the ways, and that gives them an opportunity to fight back a little bit. Yeah, it does. Even just like, a, that was a spite, that wasn't like a, oh, you know, that was like spiteful. That was just a shove it in well, Cyril's face. Well, it's interesting too, because Leandra in this entire time has really appreciated the power level of Nynaeve, or at least it like looks that way. And clearly she's following an order from Ishmael to deliver Egwene and Nynaeve to the Shan Chen. Yeah. And I don't know if she loves those orders. No, and that that's true too. That's true. And clearly, Elaine being here messes up the plan a little bit. Like when Leandrin yeah. back last episode was like, oh, you complicate things. Yeah. Not everything is going 100% according to plan right now. Well, okay, except for the fact that with Elaine gone, Leandrin certainly used that to her advantage, compelling Sheriam. Allegedly. Yeah. Allegedly. Right? You are jumping the gun here, too. I know I am. We got to talk about that as well. I know. So, okay, let's get into this first with Egwene, because Egwene is the one who gets captured. They do fight back a little bit, but again, like, Egwene, Elaine, I mean, Nynaeve can't really channel right now, but the other two girls, sure, they're powerful, but they don't really have a lot of formal training. No. And Damani are, like, literally trained to... They're trained to blow shit up. (laughs) Blow shit up and take women who can channel, and we got the introduction of, like, a bunch of words, like, Merith Damani, like, people who should be channeled. We got a lot of good book words. A lot of words, a lot of words, but it's basically any person who can channel is Merith Damani and should be any channeled. Any woman. Who any can. woman. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. So it's good that Egwene fought back, didn't go so well, she's captured. And wow, at the end of that episode, when Egwene is literally turned into Damani mm-hmm. at the end there, like that collar, <sighs> and then they put a physical leash on you. Well, yeah, because it's interesting. What I really loved visually seeing well not loved it i hated it because it's terrible but it's but, great oh my goodness yeah it's good. so the fact that they put this collar on and it turns into this big physical collar you can see yeah and like chest and then shoulder you can piece see the weaves link to the Sewell dam yeah who actually controls the woman who can channel yeah and then they clip on a physical leash yeah. just to send it home. Oh, like, yeah. It doesn't look like that physical leash is even <laughs> it's not necessary. necessary. It's just there as a reminder to yeah. the woman who can channel that now she's property. Exactly. And it is horrible. 
just horrifying. Yeah, and like if you want to make me hate the Sean Chen, you're doing a super job. Oh, absolutely. Oh, yeah. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> okay, so let's move on to Elaine and Nynaeve in what probably makes me hate this episode the most. I'm making our way into Falm. Falm. Because yeah. in the books, the pronunciation's different. Spelled the same. It's spelled the same, it's, but it's pronounced Falma. Yeah, F-A-L-M-E. Yeah. And we pronounce it Falma, F- so that's something we got to get over because in the show, this city is called Falm. And we had a whole bunch of people say Falm, 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 so I guess we got to say Falm. We have to. Oh, it's just like, I don't know if I can do it, but gotta. I'll, I'll try, I'll try. You gotta. But <laughs> in this scene, I really have to give Elaine some props for telling Nynaeve to, number one, shut up. Oh my and goodness, yeah. she knows a bunch of super helpful things. Well, I mean, that makes sense because she's daughter heir, so she definitely has some of that good royal education about like, oh, who's from here? What kind of experts do they have? What do their soldiers look like? Oh yeah. Hey, those guys. Like, those guys <laughs> clearly aren't from here. Yeah. They're foreigners. And then Nynaeve just drives me absolutely crazy. Oh yeah. She's like, I don't care who those soldiers are. I'm just getting a Gwen back. And it's like, Nynaeve, taking a look at your surroundings, taking a minute to see what's going on yeah. and formulating a plan instead of just like running around like a crazy person. Yeah, like charging through the city here. Is definitely a better way to go about doing this. Well, at least we know that show Nynaeve is pretty much identical to book Nynaeve. I know. I was so angry. <laughs> She's got just such tunnel vision yeah. about this situation. Yes, but I'm glad that Elaine is really like the level-headed person in this well, situation. Well, it didn't do much good. Well, you know, it's uh, okay. That's fair. That's fair. Because now we have to get introduced to Rima and her warder. Yeah. So they get (laughs) knocked right out. Oh, yeah. And right away, though, when we were watching, you were like, I don't think this is bad. I think this guy's okay. And I said, yeah, I actually agree with you. I had like good guy because we saw the guy spot them. He had a look of concern. Like he didn't look evil or angry. Yeah. I don't know. And he wasn't in like Shanshan gear and stuff. So that was good too. So he was a little bit undercover. Yeah. But I really appreciate this. We got to remember Rima. So. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So nothing makes me feel like I'm reading this book more than when characters <laughs> are getting knocked on the head and immediately pass out. Oh, and I mean that's the same for like so many books and shows, but it's like oh you can't my God. you can't like, just hit people in the head. <laughs> many times in one day are we gonna get knocked on the head and pass out? That's like, true. That's true. But I will say in the books we did at one point in the books have someone knocked on the head and suffer a skull fracture, which is actually super realistic. Mm. You can't just conk okay. people but in the head. Here in this scenario, in this, I'm like, yeah. oh, way to go. <laughs> You were captured, and yeah. then you immediately get captured again. Classic kidnapping just situation. Super classic. <laughs> like there is just nothing more classic. I know. The books than this situation. It's super. It, it was pretty funny. Like I, I did like this. I did like this scene. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So we got to we gotta switch gears here a little bit. I want to talk about a Shamael and the Shanchen because we got a bit of an escalation in the whole plotting. Holy moly, Ishi being the leader of the Forsaken that he is. Ishmael and the Shanchen, that yeah, he's, whole thing. He's playing the long game here with Turak and Suroth. Like he is keeping his cool. And I just keep imagining he's like the almighty leader of the bad guy force. And you think he might be you know, snap at someone like Suroth who's yelling at him basically. But he does a great job of keeping us cool and being like, yo, <laughs> like what's up? Yeah. No, that's true. And it's interesting because we get introduced to the concept of compulsion in this episode. Right. And yeah. I was thinking, like, is he compelling Turok? Is he like how is he getting his way so easily around here? Or is he just like really playing the part, playing the long game? I think I think maybe a combination of both, because compulsion as a thing, like we gotta discuss that a little bit here, but we don't really know how much that can do. Like clearly Turak says, hey, like you kind of swooped in. You're not from around our parts, but I'm impressed. I like what I've seen because you're doing some good stuff well, here. Well, yeah, because he clearly sent the Shanchen on the return somehow. Yeah, exactly. Right. With the with the visions or the prophecies or whatever it was. So, yeah. you know, I'm a little disappointed. I didn't get to see the Horn of Alir. Oh, yeah. I want to see well, that we French horn. we saw the Pad and Fane swagger. <laughs> we did. Holy moly. As he walks moly. up with the box and we get yeah. the whistle, the classic Pad and Fane whistle. Yes, we did. But, yeah, no Horn of Alir. We don't know if it's a French horn. We don't know if it's a bugle. Yeah. 
Could be a could be a saxophone. Who Tuba, knows? It could, could be anything. It could oh be anything. Goodness, so many kinds of horns. Anything could be in that box. I don't. You know, actually, when he was always starting to open it, when they put him up, put it on the table in front of Tarak, I was like, "How is he going to open this with those nails?" Oh, <laughs> it's yeah. like good thing this box good design. Thing he has other fingers. Few, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I gotta say, with those nails, they look like rings, which is also pretty cool. Mm, yeah, the costume design. Yeah. Because with Suroth, when she got her fingers not. Fingers, finger nails. Finger nails chopped up. Yeah. They looked real. Yeah, I know. So, but I'm... then Turrax looked fake, like yeah, they look ornamental. Like... Nails. Exactly. Yeah. I don't know. I- I'm curious. It's hard I want to say. I want to see more of that. Like I do. I'm. I'm digging that too. Yeah. Because my whole thing about her and the nails is, he said, "You can join this court again when you're presentable." Yeah. And so I think that her nails get chopped off, and then she basically has to wait until, until they they're grow- grown out long enough that she can come back. Is that like years? Like how Maybe. long does it take fingernails to grow that long? I don't know. Ask the ladies from the. Guinness Book of World Records. Exactly. Yeah. You know those what? Those people always had those super <laughs> super long nails. Years and I feel years. Like we talked about this already in another episode. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but what I really want to talk about with Ishmael is the Forsaken Alliance Dream World meeting. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Because we get a so couple good. of tidbits here. So, first off, I got to plug this for Ishmael. He knows the motivations behind Suroth. Turning to the dark. Oh, that, yeah. And then he also says that to Lanthier, like, hey, I know what your whole purpose is. Well, because she's like, why did you wake me? And he's like, because you're in love with that dude. And you could probably attach to him exactly. and make him Exactly, there you go. That's who we want. And Lanthier's like, yeah, I want to be in love with this guy. Yeah. Again, we're still probably together. We're still a couple. Yeah, and we're I still mean, together. like, literally yesterday, <laughs> he told me he loved me. So... Exactly. That was so funny because Lanthier would, he's like, you love me? Yeah. <laughs> He's like, right there, yes. Yeah, I know. And my favorite is Ishmael being like, are you going to betray me? And she's like, obviously. Yeah, yeah. it's a mutual it's understanding. So yeah. it, they get it. They get each other, and yeah. I do like that. Now, we can't gloss over the fact that we get some other Forsaken name dropping. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. Mogedian. Yes. And Lanfear says, she's insane. Right, and okay. And then we have Grandal, who's a vain idiot. Okay, okay. And then she the says, boys. the boys... <laughs> Couldn't string together a plan if they were compelled. Exactly. So, yeah. So got mm. the boys, and I'm just really curious. They're like, who's yeah, who? this collection of who's the boys? The rest? Who's the rest? <laughs> yeah, and it's yeah. like, are there four boys? So I think we have a number. There's eight forsaken. Eight forsaken. So we've got a Shamael, Lanfear, Mogedi, and Grandal. That's four. Yeah, but with the figurines. Yeah. That Stepin was praying to. Right. There seemed to be. Four females and four males. Right. But just it's clarific- super hard he to wasn't tell. praying to the Forsaken statues. He was praying to ward them off. Exactly. I just oh, want, yeah, okay. I just, you yeah, know, okay. I just want to be well, clarified uh, there. What? No, yeah? I'm just kidding. Yeah? Okay. Okay. <laughs> so, but for, okay. So, yeah, we do have some question marks, but we do have some answers, it seems, about the Forsaken. Yeah. And we also have to put it on the record here. I'm still shipping the relationship between Lanfear and Rand. Like, I'm digging this still. That's dumb. I like it. But also, I got to say, Lanfear, she's evil. Yeah. And she's scary. They're making the Forsaken scary. Like, I'm a little bit scared of Lanfear. Oh, they're formidable. And they're crazy. Like, she'll explode someone's head. Oh. But she'll also, like, sew that so, uh, woman's mouth shut. A la Hocus Pocus. I was going to say, like, Matrix. Oh, I don't know that one. I don't know Hocus Pocus very well, so. I know the Hocus Pocus one where the zombie guy has his mouth sewn shut, and at the end, he gets to cut it open. Oh, gross. Okay. Yeah, because he was buried with his mouth sewn shut. I don't know. In the yeah. old days, they did that. Yeah. Anyway, okay. Pocus Pocus, mouth sewn shut. Right. And then in the Not Matrix, Maddie, Agent but... Smith, like, shuts what uh, Neo's mouth. In, oh. Before he's like, you know, really Neo, but he's like, mm-hmm. okay, anyways. Mm-hmm. Anyway, so. mouth sewn shut. Right. Poor lady. Poor lady. Savage. Moraine. Moraine using her as bait. Oh, like, totally. Moraine yeah. was totally willing to, like, let her die. Oh, also, just, like, killing kill the horse. The horse. Moraine's going to do what oh. Moraine's going to do to save the world. She's trying to save the world here. Oh, my We don't got God. time to spare horses and, and ladies. Mm-hmm. So, okay. Oh, my gosh. That was shocking. Yeah. And sad. I didn't yeah. <laughs> and I think there's a little bit of a, a grudge match going now between Lanfear and Moraine because when Lanfear, like, revives herself or whatever happened there to like bring her back her bitch. she's like that bitch <laughs> yeah i know and i didn't pick that up except for that we were watching with subtitles right yes and it's right before she heals herself like she's feeling her wounds 
<laughs> and it says bitch at the bottom. Yeah, it does. Like, it oh does. Oh my gosh, that's so funny. I, I do love that. I do love that. So okay, shifting to Maureen's sister because we got some familial advice here. Okay, well, we also meet Barthanis. We do. Barthanis Damagerd, who's going to marry the queen. Right. So that seems exciting. He's a preppy boy. <laughs> yeah. I like it. I, I like he was just playing cards with Rand, though. He was, yeah. And he, like, seemed to give his mom reasonable advice. Yeah. He seems like a reasonable character. I guess so. that's a good way to put that. I don't know how, like, big of a role we're going to have with this... I don't know. ...sub-side character. Well, the... I don't know. They're setting something up. It's me- yeah, maybe. Okay, well, we're going to have to wait and see this one, too, so... Okay, anyways. Because the... now, apparently, we're staying. Yes, well, because the advice... Rand doesn't need protection, I, question mark? I have, a, I, have a, I have a bone to pick here, because mm-hmm. the advice that... Maureen's sister gives is like, hey, oh, you gave me the advice of, do you really need to be doing this thing? Yeah. And then Maureen all of a sudden is like, do I need to protect Rand from land fear? And it's, it's like, like, let me yes. tell you about the last couple months. Like, yeah. 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 Uh-huh. He needs someone Under in his corner. Spell, 100%. Yeah. 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 Like. <laughs> yeah. Anyways. I think that she was thinking about it in the way of, do I need to protect him so much that I'm just going to keep him awake endlessly? Right. Or it's like, maybe or Rand has to fend for himself a little bit. Maybe he. He doesn't need protection. If we know, we can like use Rand as bait. Well, here's the thing. Maybe he does need protection because... So she's like, hey, Rand, go back and hook up with Lanfear again, I guess. In this weird (laughs) weird dominatrix style Mm -hmm. sex with your ex-girlfriend or crazy ex-girlfriend who thinks you're still dating. Uh Uh-huh. In your past life, like it's oh, such yeah. a wild well, because ride. We do officially get <laughs> the backstory. We get the reveal of Lanfear being in love with the other prologue loose Theron. Right, allegedly. From the Age of Legends. Allegedly. And if we think back to the Age of Legends cold open, I yep. call it a prologue, but it's a beginning of a show, not right, a book. Right. Right. Uh, <laughs> so we think back to that, and we got to see some like flying cars and stuff. We did. And I love the note about Lanfear, who's like, "Uh, is there anything slow?" lower than a horse <laughs> it's like yeah and fucking like, walking this age the horse is the fastest <laughs> that's the fastest go. thing yeah it's so like walking so slower land fear but yeah. no you don't have your flying cars yeah so apparently he was in love with her as well before he met his wife yeah but we also need to keep in mind that moraine is an unreliable source she could be wrong about things point. i mean she is the one who told us we can't take horses in the ways and then who leandrine bringing horses out of the ways i know so okay mm-hmm. okay mm-hmm. okay we gotta be on guard here yeah and then she's like hey rand i want you to go and find land fear because that's gonna go super well yeah and then we get the rand on a wheel situation yeah he which we got in several previews of we the trailer. did and he is looking buff he is holy moly and now a lot of people call this one it is a dream world scene it is yeah. and that's the like general rule is like if something super weird is going on it's probably a dream yeah and that makes sense. Okay. Now, before we wrap up, I need to know, how much do you love the brown Aja? Oh, that's my favorite. Yeah, no, I, I think I said it, but I, I'll say it again. That is my wheel. Like, I belong in the brown Aja where yeah. it's like, let's I pop know. some bottles. Let's read some fucking books. I know. Like, let's but, go. Come on. But Varen Detective is so good in this situation. Oh, she yeah. She figures out the weird compulsion situation, and then I love Leandrin covering her tracks, except with the perfectly balanced five <laughs> white asparagus sitting at the top of her backpack. Yeah. That's not how things carry in a backpack. Well, you that's should. That's the craziest thing I've ever seen. You don't put the asparagus on the bottom of your backpack. No. Like, I know that you like to no, stack no, no. groceries just willy-nilly. five white asparagus don't just sit at the top of the backpack and don't move if you want like, them to unless be... <laughs> you super glue them there for a tv show yeah that's what i'm saying or it's if like, you're covering your and, tracks oh and we're not gonna like bundle those up they're just free free wheeling in the backpack yeah it's like white where's asparagus? the little plastic bag that they go inside to... it literally anything the rope wrapping them up don't i don't trust i don't the trust it thing. don't that trust was the it craziest thing the yeah. loose white asparagus in the back i know i know you know what i was actually really happy that we got this like sub side plot of like Varen was suspicious of Sherry Am in the whole conversation. And that was a super weird thing going on until like, I didn't know where we were going with that until it's like, Hey, compulsion is a thing that can happen. And I think it's just important to note that clearly Sherry Am, like from Varen's perspective, like there is some weird compulsion, magic, mind funkiness going on. And even though Sherry Am clearly took this note about like where the girls went, her mind is still trying to process it and make it make sense yeah. in her own brain. 
So it's just like there is like she she's not like, oh, that's my writing. But I didn't do that. I didn't write that. She's clearly trying to like make it make sense. Yes. So no, we got to make sense. So we we, we got to watch out for that, for how compulsion may or may not work in the future, too. Yeah. And then just connecting those dots, we have Yasika of the Brown Aja who has an eidetic memory and figured this out and pieced together that this means the Black Aja exists. Right. So we got to be on guard because like probably, I guess, Leandrin's a safe bet to say she's definitely a part of it. Right. And now when we were watching it, I was like, oh man, this actress really reminds me of Cho Chang. Right. From Harry Potter. (laughs) And I was like, oh yeah, it does. Yeah. mm -hmm, mm -hmm, Yeah. Scottish accent, you know. Right. All of that. And then someone in our Discord was like, cool, Cho Chang. And I was like, wait, what? (laughs) Wait, what? Turns out, yeah, Katie Leung is... Cho Chang. Yeah. She was Cho Chang. And also here. That's why she reminds me of Cho Chang because that's the same it's actress. Her. It's the same actress. Just just older. She's just older. <laughs> and like, this looks good. Yeah. So I felt like an idiot. Fantastic. And no, I'm it's like, great. Oh my it's God. Great. What? Wait, what? So in case anyone's wondering. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. That's good. Yeah. Okay. But I think that will do it for this episode. Yeah. I'm excited for when we actually get to break it down. Yeah, for sure. That'll be good. And I'm looking forward to next week already. Episode six. Here we come. Okay. Because as we say around here, it's part of the pattern now. Yeah, it's part of the pattern. Thanks so much for listening to this episode. The Wheel Weaves is hosted and edited by Danny and Brett, produced by Danny and Brett with... Passion Socks, Cody Feltz, Benjamin, Michelle O'Brien, Jamie Young, Megan Smiley, Jared Berg, Ricky Morset, Lance Barden, Charlie Haz, Adam, Marta Thier, Michelle Forbes, MKM, Antoine Benoit, Lawrence Bradley, and Eric Reed. With music by Audio Nautics. Please be sure to check out our Patreon page if you are interested in supporting us and the podcast. We would love to send you some Patreon exclusive merchandise as a thank you. Plus, you'll gain access to our episodes earlier than everyone else. And at the time of recording, we have over 40 bonus episodes for your listening pleasure. You can find all that and more at patreon.com slash the wheel weaves podcast. For general information about our show and information like how to send us shot glasses or how to join our Discord or how to get in touch with us, you can visit thewheelweavespodcast.com. And as always, please be sure to give us that five-star review because it really does make a huge difference in helping other people find us. Right now, we are offering to send exclusive merchandise to select people who give us five-star reviews if you leave your username for Instagram or Twitter and I'll reach out to you that way. Also, please be sure to tell a friend, Riyadh, because referrals really are the best compliment. Thanks again for listening. This really is part of the pattern now.